If you're fed up with building normal computers, then you're in the right spot. My box of ridiculous PC accessories is beginning to overflow, and so it's time to put some of these to work in order to build the most absurd computer that we can. Listen. Hey everyone, I'm Mr. Yeaster, your tech tinkerer, and if you follow my TikTok or YouTube shorts, then this box right here should look pretty familiar to you. As its name suggests, this is where I keep all of my ridiculous PC accessories that I come across through my tech tinkering adventures. And while I have tested or reviewed these individually, it's time to put them all together to see what kind of powerhouse they can create. And so that's what I want to do today. Let's build a normal computer, but toss in as many of these ridiculous accessories as we can to see what the outcome is. So let's do that. Now for the actual components of the build, we are going to be putting together a pretty basic Intel computer. We have a 10400F here with a compatible motherboard, but for the graphics card, we're going to be using a dated NVIDIA Quadro, and you'll see why in a little bit. In addition to that, we'll be using some Corsair RAM and a stock cooler and whatever else we need. So let's get started. Now getting started with our build, let's first start off with installing our CPU into our motherboard. What we want to do here is align the golden corner of our processor and make sure that fits in properly with our triangle corner of our socket. And once we identify those, we can slot it in as easily as that. And just like that, we are ready to include our first ridiculous PC accessory, which in this case is a diamond-based thermal paste. That's right, this thermal paste has seven carat diamond powder inside of it. Now, diamonds actually have some pretty great thermal conductivity, so this isn't as ridiculous as it sounds on paper, but the fact that there's diamonds inside of our computer just makes it absurd to begin with. So we got our tube here, let's squirt out some diamond thermal paste. Now, if you're anything like me, you would expect this diamond thermal paste to be shiny like diamonds, but it is in fact just silver. A little disappointing, but nonetheless, it's there. Another thing to note is that this is quite a bit thicker than your normal thermal paste, so it might not spread as easily, but that's where our second ridiculous PC accessory will help us out. Up next is something that is truly ridiculous, and that is a thermal paste finger cot. I promise this is a real thing, you can look it up, but essentially you can think of it as just the fingers of a latex glove. And the use case of this is to prevent your fingers from getting dirty when you are pushing thermal paste around with your hands. I'm not gonna dwell too much on the design of this as I can already hear you guys typing away with some risque comments. And so let's just move on to spreading the thermal paste with this thermal paste cot. Now this thermal paste is very thick. Wow, this diamond thermal paste just does not wanna spread at all. So we're gonna stick with this uh, little sock looking thing. And thanks to the finger cot, my hands are nice and safe. All right, with that, we are ready to install our CPU cooler. And so I am just going to be using a basic stock Intel cooler, nothing too fancy here. Anyone else struggle to install Intel coolers or is that just me? With our cooler installed, it's time to turn to the RAM, and this is where things should get pretty interesting. If you watched my previous long form factor video, then you should be familiar with RAM risers, which are essentially these adapters that can increase the height of your RAM. After reading through some comments, it sounds like the main use case for these is if you have a test bench or something that you are regularly putting RAM in and out of, and you don't want the slot to get damaged, you would use one of these as a protection mechanism. So the more you know, not completely useless, but still certainly ridiculous. Now in that past video, we discovered that we can have up to five of these adapters on a single stick of RAM and it will still work. And so for this computer, since this is the most ridiculous computer that we can put together, we are going to put all five on there, which will leave us with one left over to use for the second stick of RAM. So with this installed, we will put it into the first slot of our motherboard. And just like that, our computer is looking pretty absurd. <laughs> And with our leftover riser, let's install the second stick of RAM, which won't quite be as tall, but it is trying its best, which is all we can ask for. And with that, the ridiculousness continues with these two sticks of RAMs at varying heights. But our accessory box is not done with RAM yet. As you might have noticed, this RAM, while very tall at this point, does not have RGB, which is a key pillar of having an awesome computer rig, right? But don't worry, our next ridiculous PC accessory is in fact an add-on RAM RGB kit. So this little guy here can clip onto the top of this RAM stick and it has a dedicated power button in order to turn on some RGB. Now I do only have one of these, so I think it makes the most sense to put this RGB stick on top of this taller stick of RAM. So the way this works is it's really just clips. And so you just physically clip this onto the top of your RAM. 
which might be a bit difficult one-handed. Now this RGB cooler is designed for RAM sticks that don't even have additional heat sinks. So I kind of have to force it on top of these Corsair Vengeance RAMs, which do have these heat sinks in order for it to fit properly. But with that, it is successfully installed. And actually it fits very snugly, I'm impressed. But I'm less impressed by all of these additional wires that it creates just to have some RGB on top of our tower of RAM. So now that our RGB RAM is installed, before we jump over to the next ridiculous PC accessory, I want to let you know that Mr. Geaster merchandise is now available for purchase on my website, MrGeaster.com. So if you're looking for something to wear during your next tech tinkering adventure, then feel free to jump over there to grab a t-shirt or a sweatshirt. All right, so now it's time to install our graphics card, which as I mentioned at the beginning, this is an NVIDIA Quadro, which is a workstation graphics card. But the reason that I selected it for this computer build is because we are going to replace the GPU cooler with the CPU cooler. So this here is an AMD Wraith Prism, which comes prepackaged in a handful of Ryzen processors. And with our next ridiculous PC accessory, we are going to be able to install this guy on top of this NVIDIA Quadro GPU. This first requires us to remove the existing cooler of this graphics card, which we can do by flipping it around and removing these four screws that are holding it in place. And with our four screws removed, and as we flip it over, we can see that this cooler can now pop off, revealing the GPU itself. Now the cooler of a GPU, as you can see, is plugged into this specific header. And if we look at our CPU cooler, we can see that this actually won't fit by itself. Which brings us to our next ridiculous PC accessory, which will be very helpful in this case. It is a splitter that will allow us to plug in our CPU cooler into our graphics card. Removing this from the bag, we can see that we can actually install up to two fans into the splitter, but in this case, we're only gonna need one. So in place of where the GPU cooler plugged in, we are going to plug in our splitter instead, which is a perfect fit. And then at the other end of the splitter, we are going to plug in our CPU cooler right here, just like that. And now when this powers on, the CPU cooler will boot to life and will actively cool our GPU. Now, because our GPU will now be so bulky with this giant CPU cooler on top of it, we are going to have to use a GPU riser in order to properly install it. This riser is very similar to these RAM risers that we have installed. However, it plugs into the PCIe slots instead of the RAM slot. So with this installed into our motherboard, we can now install our GPU inside of this slot, which gives us some flexibility to move it around. It does, however, introduce even more wires, but at this point, that's just part of the aesthetic. So the last thing we have to do with our GPU now that it's plugged into the riser is actually to secure the cooler on top of it. And because this is a ridiculous PC, I am simply going to use rubber bands. This is probably a good time to say don't try this at home if you are concerned about damaging any of your parts. But just like that, our CPU cooler is quote unquote secured to our GPU. And at this point, I think it's safe to say that our computer is ridiculous. Now every computer needs a way to be powered on, and our next ridiculous PC accessory will be this momentary switch power button. You might have seen this in a previous video of mine, but it's essentially a military style switch that can replace our normal power button. To install the switch, all we have to do is cover the power pins with this guy right here. And so in this motherboard, these two pins here are the power pins, and so if we cover those, we are good to go. With that, our ridiculous computer is nearing completion, but what would a ridiculous computer be without a ridiculous monitor to go along with it? Because it feels like these go so well together, this here is the screen of a broken laptop that I've refurbished, pulled out, and turned into a portable monitor. So this is what we're going to hook up our computer to to see if we can output a display. Now in order to plug our computer into this screen, we are going to need to use a very specific controller that interfaces with this specific brand. Now this controller interfaces with this screen and provides us some functionality like being able to switch inputs, as well as to actually plug in a cable directly from our graphics card into this PCB. Installing the controller into the screen is as simple as just plugging in this ribbon. And with that, this screen should now be able to act as a monitor. So we have our ridiculous PC, we have our ridiculous monitor. Now let's grab a power supply, plug it all in, and see if it works. Power supply, power supply. All right, we got ourselves our power supply, and now we have a bunch of stuff to plug in. We have our normal stuff like motherboard power, CPU power. Our graphics card is low key enough where it doesn't need dedicated power. However, we do need to plug in the riser so that has power. So we'll plug that riser in so the riser will work. Additionally, we need to remember to plug in our RGB RAM kit because that of course needs dedicated power. So luckily I have enough slots open in my power supply. And with that, I think I plugged everything in except for the monitor, but I need to grab a separate power supply for that. All right, I have my monitor power supply here now. And the last thing we don't want to forget to do is plug in a video output cable from our graphics card and plug that into our monitor controller. In this case, our option is DVI or DisplayPort. I have a DVI, so let's use that. I mean, that's a good sign on the monitor side, but 
we have to see if this computer all works together. Before we power this on, a quick recap of our ridiculous PC so far. We have diamond-based thermal paste underneath here that we applied with one of these finger cots. We also have our RAM installed with five risers and an additional stick of RAM installed with one riser. Can't forget the RGB RAM kit on top of this that has its own dedicated power. And then the cooler on our GPU has been replaced with a CPU cooler and bound together with a rubber band. And finally, the screen that we're using was pulled directly from a laptop and converted into a portable monitor. Altogether, that is one ridiculous PC. So now, let's see if it works. Time to turn on our power supply and then use our momentary switch to try to turn on the PC. Prepare to launch in three, two, one. Oh, oh nice. And just like that, our CPU cooler, which is on our GPU, spins to life and does have the RGB still. We can also see our RGB RAM come to life on top of this giant RAM tower, which we also have the power to cycle through different patterns if we are not content with the existing RGB sequence. <laughs> it's so ridiculous. But most importantly, we're seeing that we're not getting a signal output, which is not ideal. So let's do some troubleshooting real quick to figure out what went wrong. My initial gut is that the RAM needs to be reseated with all of these adapters. You need to make sure that each one of them is completely plugged in and secured to the next. So let's try it again. Powering it on, we see that. Come on, give us a signal. Hey, we got a signal, there we go. As you can see, we made it to the BIOS screen, which I'm chalking up as a success. And just goes to show that if you combine all of these ridiculous accessories together, it really does still work. But to evaluate our ridiculous PC even further, I want to run two main tests. The first is to stress test the CPU in order to determine if this diamond thermal paste is any good at keeping it cool. And second is a GPU stress test in order to figure out if this makeshift CPU cooler is doing its job. Starting off with our CPU stress test, let's first open up MSI Afterburner in order to monitor the CPU temperature, which after changing a few settings will be displayed in this top leftmost line graph. And to actually perform the stress test, we'll be using a program called Prime95. And if we enable the test, we should be able to see the temperature immediately spike, which we do. Depending on where this temperature lands will dictate how good of a thermal conductor this thermal paste actually is. I know stock Intel coolers get a lot of flack, but the fact that you don't need any type of brackets or additional supports to install it makes me kind of like them, even though I struggle installing them every single time. And now that it's been a few minutes, we can see that the temperature is beginning to stabilize around 80 degrees Celsius. That's only a couple degrees hotter than if we just use normal thermal paste inside of the same system. So it looks like diamonds are performing pretty well here. So now moving over to the GPU stress test, I'm going to be using the Heaven Benchmark test. Now with this test, I'm really curious to see if the GPU will crash, but so far it doesn't look like that, although the temperature is getting up to the triple digits. That said, it's not as hot as running the same test with the normal Quadro cooler. So our CPU cooler is doing just fine. So after surviving these tests, I'm pretty impressed by this ridiculous PC. Now I have a whole other shipment of ridiculous PC accessories headed my way to replenish our box of ridiculous PC accessories. So subscribe if you wanna see the next iteration of this and let me know in the comments if you have come across any ridiculous PC accessories of your own. That's all I have for you today. So I hope you enjoyed this tech tinkering experiment. And as always, thank you so much for joining me and I will catch you in the next one. Talk to you guys later.